Genesis 43 and verse 32. And we're also going to read Genesis 46 and verse 34. Once you sound Genesis 43, 32, let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God. Genesis chapter 43 and verse 32. Here the word of God says, And they set on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did eat with him, the him being Joseph, by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for it is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Go to Genesis 46, 34. Genesis 46. 34. That ye shall say thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from our youth even until now, both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Father, O oh Lord, I thank you, dear God, every time I step into the pulpit, Lord. This is a great privilege. This is a great honor. Lord. And it is also, Lord, a fearful thing. Because I'm here, Lord, not to promote myself by any means. But, Lord, everything that is said and done, Lord, here is supposed to be done according to your purpose, your will, your guidance, and for your glory and your end for your people. Amen. And so, Father, with that in mind, I pray and ask for the fullness of your Spirit to descend upon me in great power and strength for the sake of thee, your lambs. I pray and ask for it in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. Abomination. Abomination. These two verses that we just read are the first mention of the term abomination in the scriptures. Excuse me. Back in trouble and dry throat. Which again, this is the flesh. I had no problem with my throat for the whole two weeks out of time. Mm -hmm. It's because flesh doesn't like what I'm doing. Flesh is going to fight you when it doesn't like what you're doing. Remember that. Now the Hebrew word, and it's the same word in both instances, carries with it the meaning of something that is abhorrent. Something that is disgusting. Land west of the Sturr's Dictionary of 1828, first edition of Webster's Dictionary, gives the definition as extreme hatred or detestation, defilement, pollution, both physically and or spiritually, idolatry, evil, evil doctrine, evil practices, okay? uh, moral defilement. The word abomination appears in the scripture 75 times. Abominations, 74 times. Abominable, 23 times. Abominably, once. So you have 173 times in the scriptures uh, where we find abomination in one of its forms being mentioned. In our two texts, the scriptures speak of the Jews as shepherds. And the fact that because of this, they are an abomination to the Egyptians. Now, the Egyptians were okay, quite frankly, with the benefits yeah. that came from husbandry of sheep and goats and oxen. But they apparently had some kind of a prejudice against those who cared for these animals. Now, these animals are animals that Split the hoof, chew the cut. Right, so they're they're clean. Now, no doubt, you know, I mean they had cattle, we know that. If you read 
the Exodus account, they had cattle there. They were probably hiring non-Egyptians to do this work. But man, they didn't like these people. They didn't socialize with them. They didn't mix with them. They wanted nothing to do with them. Abel. Abel was a shepherd. And guess what? He was abominable to his brother Cain. He detested his brother Abel. To the point where he murdered him. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they were all shepherds. And apparently little did the Egyptians know, but Joseph, <laughs> when he was a boy, was a shepherd. Egypt, in the Bible, is a type of the world, and the worldly men. And of course, this present evil world is ruled over by it, God, little g, the devil. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the Bible, is known as the Good Shepherd. He is known as the Chief shepherd and as the bishop of our souls. Now a bishop is an overseer underneath somebody else. Okay? As in pastors. Pastors. Okay? Well, pastor, okay? It means shepherd. That's what a pastor is. He's a shepherd. Under the chief shepherd, answerable to him or his sheep. That's another subject, though, for another message. <laughs> Go to Exodus 8 with me. Exodus 8. You find out another interesting, interesting thing here about the Egyptian. Exodus 8, verses 25, 26, and 27. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. All right, you want to sacrifice? Go ahead, but you can't leave Egypt to do it. Moses said, It is not meet to do so. For we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he sh shall command us. Not only did they find shepherds abominable, but they found the sacrificing of the sheep and the goats and the oxen, an abomination, these Egyptians. Hmm. <laughs> yeah? Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? Is he not the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world? And is that not an abomination to this world yeah. out here? It's amazing, you know, what the Lord Jesus Christ did for this world is an abomination to them. Over in Leviticus 11, we aren't going to go over there, but there God lists for the Jews all the animals that are to be abominable to them. Okay? Things are not supposed to be. Thing is, well, again, those things don't apply to us, by the way, folks. For the Christian, it's what it says in 1 Timothy 4, 4. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now, the first instance of anything being cited as being abominable to God in the scriptures, though it's found Leviticus 18, for starters. Leviticus 18. Pick it up at verse 22. Down in the 
the end of the chapter. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before beast to lie down therewith. It is confusion. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. For in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore do I visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself shall vomit out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your nation, nor any stranger, excuse me, any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Go to chapter 20, verse 13. Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Deuteronomy 22.5 Deuteronomy 22 Verse 5 the woman shall not wear that which pertains to, unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. God doesn't care what you wear. Oh, yeah. Another message. Don't go into that. This, of course, speaks very clearly to us about the sodomites and their pride. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, but as Satan is a king over all the children of pride, read over in Job 41, and as pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall, Proverbs 16, 18, it's quite clear what the sin and the abomination of Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities of the plain was. And exactly how God will deal with that which is an abomination to him. It's not a message this morning about the stuff that's going on this month out in the world. But that's what God has to say about it. The scriptures make it very clear as to those things that are an abomination to God. That's just one. <laughs> now we've got 173 references in the scripture. And they ought to be an abomination to us as well. Idols, for example. Deuteronomy chapter 7. What's an idol? Anything that takes the place of God in your life. I don't care what it is. You put it ahead of the Lord, it's an idol. Deuteronomy 7, we want to read verses 25 and 26. The graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire. 
Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Pretty clear. Okay, those practices, those things associated with them, are an abomination unto God. First Kings 11, 1 through 10. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their God. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then did David build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Leviticus 18.21 Leviticus 18 verse 21 Thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. O be the song. How about Jeremiah 19? God got to say there about abomination. Jeremiah 19, verse 5. They have built also the high places of Baal, burned their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. Stay in Jeremiah. Go back, go to 731. Jeremiah 731. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Yeah. Idols. The froward. Proverbs 3.32. Proverbs 3, verse 32. The froward. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. To be froward is to be perverse. To have turned away from what is good, what is right, uh, and to exhibit an attitude, a behavior of aversion and reluctance towards that which is good and that is right. An unwillingness to yield to what's good and right, an unwillingness to comply with what is good 
and right. Rebelliousness, in other words. Rebelliousness. First Samuel fifteen twenty three. First Samuel fifteen twenty three. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, which is an abomination. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. That is Saul. While we're, we're close to that area, go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 6, 16. Proverbs. Close being relative, I guess. <laughs> Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. These six things that the Lord hates. God is love. God is love. Uh, guess what? God hates. <laughs> These six things that the Lord hates, yea, seven, are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. These seven things, God says, are an abomination. A proud look. You know what? If it shows on your face and your demeanor, then it most definitely is in your heart. A lying tongue. Okay, well, who's the devil? The devil is a liar and the father of it. Okay. That pretty much <laughs> says it all. Okay, little white lies are lies. Lies of omission are lies. Promises and commitments that one has made without any intention of being kept are lies. How about hands that shed innocent blood? And I'm going to tell you, they're far more prevalent than you think. Far more prevalent than you think because it's about what's in the heart. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, you know physical murder, rampant, rampant all around the world. Go to John chapter 844 with me, though. John 8, 44. Jesus speaking, Year of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh, and when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and a father of it. With that in mind, go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Cain was a murderer before he ever struck the first blow. Because what was in his heart. God looks at your heart. God looks at your attitude. It's not a matter of necessarily so much of what you do. Okay, what you do is already here. 
Yeah, that's why God despises falsehood, despises hypocrisy. You can not deceive God. He knows what's in your heart. And it's no different than a man who lusts after a woman in his heart. Christ says he committed adultery with her already. You didn't have to commit the act. God looks at your attitude. He looks at your motives just as much as he looks at the actions of your life. They are every bit as relevant to him and they're just as clear and wide open to him as anything that you... Okay, men think they do things in secret and that height. And it's all going to be revealed someday. Jeremiah 17.9 quoted the verse often to you. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And with that thought in mind, one of those seven things, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. I mean, this goes back. I mean, we we'll go all the way back Genesis 6 5. Right? And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it was such an abomination to God he said I'm just going to wipe it all out I'm going to wipe it clean eight souls survived out of a population that was probably equivalent to exactly what it is today you know, 20 billion souls eight only Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord but just how do you think God, your Father, feels when his children devise it, wicked imaginations in their heart? Feet that are swift and running to mischief. Have you ever noticed or known you know, a person who just seems to not only always seem to be in trouble, but it's like they're just always looking for trouble. Mm -hmm. I've known a few. You know, it's like they go out of their way to find trouble. Job 15. Book of Job, chapter 15, verses 34 and 35. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. They conceive mischief, and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepareth deceit. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, 14-17. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not 